There are two purposes for this video. One is to expose and challenge the blatantly false and malicious statements made about me in an article in the Inglewood Today newspaper, which was written by its publisher, Willie Brown. The second purpose is to expose the unethical and possibly illegal arrangement between Willie Brown and Inglewood Today and the elected officials of the city of Inglewood, who funnel hundreds of thousands of Inglewood's taxpayer dollars to Brown's paper with the clear understanding that Inglewood today will withhold facts from the public about the city's problems and the serious misconduct of city administrators. Willie Brown is the publisher of Inglewood Today, a free newspaper that's distributed in Inglewood, California. His paper makes a great deal, if not most, of its money from the city of Inglewood, publishing city ordinances and other documents that the city of Inglewood is legally required to publish. He's also a paid political consultant to Inglewood's mayor, James Butts, and he's made a lot of money publishing political ads for various candidates and incumbent city officials. Inglewood City Clerk Yvonne Horton, the woman who has a hand in deciding what paper gets the city's business, even has a column in Brown's newspaper. And that's the kind of publicity that helps people get reelected. You might think that being a publisher, but being dependent on so much of your money from certain politicians might create a conflict of interest in what stories you print and how they are written. Well, you'd be right. It appears that Willie Brown has no problem using the hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars he gets from Inglewood's residents to blatantly lie to and manipulate those same taxpayers for his own personal benefit. Brown's paper has a history of having very low ethical standards when it comes to evidence, objectivity, and fair play. Election litter is when political materials are inappropriately placed on private, public, or commercial property or left in appropriate places too long after an election. Because of all the money spent in the June 11, 2013 runoff election in Inglewood, political materials were everywhere. Campaigns would fill your mailbox with flyers, and sometimes the campaigns would try to put signs and flyers on your property whether you wanted them to or not. Now, Inglewood has codes to cover this. Inglewood's municipal code gives a general list of places signs cannot be, like on traffic signs, bushes, trees, lampposts, etc. And they can't be too close to polling places. Other codes say signs cannot be up more than 10 days past an election. And it says that these inappropriate placed or leftover signs can be removed by any concerned observer. The problem is that the city of Inglewood doesn't always enforce their codes strictly and people put signs and other advertising where they shouldn't. They're still close to polling places, and they're still in ivy and, and in bushes and on trees, and sometimes they're three and four crammed onto a fence of private and commercial properties, sometimes vacant properties or lots without the owner's permission. The white sign in the back was literally still there from a previous election. It was an eyesore, and sometimes it was a safety issue. Some political signs distracted you from more important street signs. Some signs even made it hard for firemen to see life-saving fire hydrants. Can you see this fire hydrant? It's behind that Dotson sign. In Inglewood's April 2013 election and in the June 2013 runoff election where challenger George Dotson ran against incumbent Mike Stevens and challenger Alex Padilla ran against incumbent Judy Dunlap, Dotson and Padilla paid Brown lots of money for campaign ads and assistance. Now it's fine for the paper or anyone to support a candidate, but not only are Brown's reasons for supporting certain candidates and incumbent suspect because of its dependence on their continued financial support, 
but Brown almost certainly passes an ethical line with the way he supports them. He literally reports nothing bad about those who pay him or help him get paid and goes out of his way to report or even blatantly fabricate negative stories about the opponents of his financial supporters. Before James Butts was mayor, Brown's paper implied that he or his campaign vandalized then-Mayor Danny Tabor's campaign headquarters. The story said, with 1,500 votes left to count in Inglewood's mayoral race between Mayor Daniel K. Tabor and former Santa Monica Police Chief James Butts, Mayor Tabor's campaign headquarters were vandalized overnight by unknown assailants. Located on Manchester Boulevard between Market Street and La Brea Avenue, the campaign windows were busted out sometime Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Witnesses confirmed seeing a tan SUV with James Butts for Mayor signs canvassing the block several times. And that's how Inglewood Today and Willie Brown keep their money rolling in, using irresponsible speculation, accusations without evidence, anonymous witnesses, and unnamed authors to attack the opponents of those who are paying them. But now that James Butts is mayor, you will not find that story in Inglewood Today's archives. And the paper prints nothing but praise for Butts and his allies, including the city clerk, who Butts accused of election fraud when he was running for mayor. And the paper prints nothing but attacks on the mayor's opponents. This is just one example. The name of the business in this story and the faces of the owners of their friends and family have been hidden to respect their privacy. There's a burger stand in Inglewood, and right across the street from that burger stand is the former campaign headquarters for former Inglewood City Councilwoman Judy Dunlap. Willie Brown stated in a story he did on May 30th, quote, the restaurant is reportedly a favorite hangout spot for incumbent Judy Dunlap. And one of the owners of the burger stand said they had been friends with Dunlap for over 20 years. And during the District 2 runoff election between Judy Dunlap and Alex Padilla, the owners had a big sign in their front window supporting Dunlap. And political flyers inside. And inside the burger stand, there was a wall practically dedicated to Judy Dunlap. Pictures of Dunlap here, pictures of Dunlap there, and there, and everywhere. They had more pictures of Dunlap on their wall than of the president. So one day I bought some food at the burger stand. I paid for my food and walked over and carefully looked at the wall with all the pictures of Judy Dunlap and the owners and their friends or family. And I thought to myself, the owners really like Judy Dunlap a lot. And after I looked at those pictures of Judy Dunlap with the owners and the owner's friends or family, I went to sit by the window where I could very easily see their big Dunlap sign in the window and Dunlap's big campaign sign on her campaign headquarters right across the street. And so I sat down for a while and then I watched their TV for a while. And then I looked on top of a trash can and I saw some flyers for the man that was running against Judy Dunlap in the runoff, Alex Padilla. Now, this isn't the same flyer. This is one of the many political ads that Alex Padilla paid Willie Brown to put in Inglewood today. But the point is that even though Dunlap was not my councilwoman, and even though I frankly wasn't satisfied with either her or Padilla being on the council, I looked at those flyers for Padilla on top of the trash can and thought about all the Dunlap pictures with the owners and the owner's friends or family and their big Dunlap sign in their front window and how close they were to Dunlap's headquarters and I figured that there was no way that these owners agreed to have these flyers for Padilla in their business. They must have been snuck there, put there without the owner's permission. So I moved them from the top of the trash can into the same trash can where immediately an angry man took them out about three seconds later and put them right back, undamaged, where they had been before on top of the trash can. And about two minutes later, I got my food and left. Now, in hindsight, should I have found out who the owners were, confirmed that they didn't want the flyers there, and if not, then thrown them away? Yes. 
it just seemed so obvious at the time that the flyers were out of place. I actually did look around to see if anyone was dressed differently or was clearly the owner, but there wasn't. Now, I've talked to the owners several times since, and they didn't care that I threw the flyers away. They didn't support Padilla, but they had their friend Dunlap's materials there and felt it would be fair to let Padilla leave his as well. That was my mistake. At the time, I thought the man who took the flyers back out of the can might be the owner because he was so mad. But the real owners told me that the man who took the flyers out of the can was the same man who put them on top of the can in the first place. One of the owners described him as Padilla's right-hand man. So, of course, that man told his biased version of what happened to someone else who worked for Padilla, Willie Brown. But a story about an honest mistake, a story about someone moving something about 12 inches from the top of a trash can into the trash can wasn't a story. It couldn't be used by Willie Brown to help his client Padilla defeat Dunlap in the election, and it couldn't be used by Brown to help his client James Butts by ruining the reputation of the person who had been exposing the mayor's past civil rights abuses and is currently lying to the public and helping violate state law to cover up police misconduct in Englewood. So Brown decided to link the story to Dunlap and ruin my reputation by making up a terrible story about me. Apparently, Willie Brown decided to lie. Now, I'm sure that any reasonable person would understand how I mistakenly thought that the actual owners of the burger stand didn't want those flyers in their burger stand. And it's a fact that although it turned out that the actual owners did allow the flyers to be left there, they were not mad at me for throwing them away. However, even if the owners didn't care about the flyers, and even if the flyers were obviously out of place, and even if I made an honest mistake, I can still accept someone criticizing me for trying to throw the flyers away, even if they only sat in the trash for three seconds, if their reason for criticizing me is that my mistake might have potentially denied a dozen or so people who might have actually read or taken the flyers political information that they might have wanted or needed. But at the same time, I expect those same people who criticized me for an honest mistake that almost, almost denied only a dozen or so citizens political information that they might have wanted or needed, I expect those same people to be ready to demand that Inglewood City Council cease all business with Inglewood Today and its publisher, Willie Brown, because for years, Willie Brown's paper, Inglewood Today, has used hundreds of thousands of Inglewood's taxpayer dollars to lie to and deceive those same taxpayers by using the very lowest form of journalism and denying tens of thousands of people political information that they might have wanted or needed just to make money. To sum it all up, Willie Brown lies.